everyone. Welcome back to Chats with Izzy on Izzy Sandpit TV. Today I chatted with Neil from Blue Nation. He is the lead singer and guitarist. We had a great chat about all sorts, about Robert Plant, about Led Zeppelin, about uh, his dad, who's his manager. Uh, it's It was just a really interesting chat, um, really lighthearted and really enjoyable. I uh, hope you enjoy w watching or listening to it as much as I did. And if you're, I hope you are enjoying all the other content on the channel, if you would like to like and subscribe. Anyway, without further ado, here's Neil and myself from Blue Nation. Enjoy. Down by the riverside. As well, again, she's making Hello. more... Uh, more appearances than me and today i'm super excited i've got a, a really cool band on today i've yeah. got blue nation and i've got their lead singer and guitarist neil hi neil how's it going mate hello mate how you doing that that's probably I'm... the nicest interview and intro introduction we've ever had so yeah <laughs> no honestly man um as as i already said i'm loving the john lennon slash <laughs> um nirvana look you know it's looking very rock and roll i'm liking it man i'm really liking the vibe it's not it's not deliberate i promise you um someone said we did an interview and someone said i sound like kurt cobain i was like nah i don't wow. the glasses are because i can't see <laughs> The hat is because we did a festival yesterday and did three sets and I'm shattered <laughs> and my hair looks horrific, right? And I wear these chains all the time. And this is just a scratchy little t-shirt. So there's, I've just blown my coolness out the water with being honest. So yeah, yeah that was self, and uh, that was self sabotage, Neil. Please don't do it again. <laughs> um, I, I've got news for you. We do this a lot. <laughs> um, well, someone said that one of the comments on Facebook last week was uh, shout out to Rob who who left this message that I look like I'd. Um, I was a football manager and I just lost 2-1 at Oldham. And I'm like, I was wearing this sort of <laughs> Under Armour tracksuit. And I thought, yeah, it's probably not very rock and roll. But then what is rock and roll, man? You know, oh, man. it's what nothing. It's, a, it's uh... a cliche. Rock and roll is being who you want to be and just accepting so, it. If yeah. that is a football manager from the second division, that's who you are, man. Just, well, just you know, listen, I, I'm not being funny, but I guarantee that being the Oldham manager uh would probably pay better than being a podcast host so <laughs> you very know, true uh, shout out to it's saying that the oldham athletic owner judging by what paul skulls has said previously is a freaking psychopath so yeah. we'll avoid that so anyway man so so lead singer and guitarist of of blue yeah. nation um tell me about blue nation how did you guys start um i've been i've been in bands since i was a kid um and to be honest, I was, I've always been looking for that perfect blend of, of bandmates. Right. And yeah. like most people I've gone through loads of drummers, loads of bass players. Um, I met Luke about five years ago, six years ago. Right, okay. And um, it was just a meeting of mine. And obviously Luke's on plays bass and it was a yeah. meeting of mine. We went out for a beer and yeah. a guy came up to us while we were having a beer. First time we've met each other and said, are you guys in a band? And we were like, yeah, that means we need to, you need to join this. <laughs> Hint. Um, hint hint yeah hint, hint. and uh it just it just made perfect sense and then we've been looking for a drummer i mean we've always had drummers right but some of them weren't committed enough some of them well we went on to do other things and we were yeah. just always always me and luke against the world and right. our manager and we said this this feels too hard right and um ollie was in blue nation when he was 16 years ago and luke said to me just go get ollie because he's a sound guy, he's an incredible drummer, yeah. and uh, and look, look, he's a he's a good kid, man. And I phoned Ollie up and said, look, I want to go out for a pint with you with Luke and stuff, and said, yeah, and, and he he agreed to to be our drummer, and it's just gone from strength to strength in the last yeah. kind of year and a half since he since he joined because we're all in the, pulling in the same direction. So, Absolutely. yeah, that's a long answer for no. about seven years. No, <laughs> like you know, I, it's funny because bands sort of i think sometimes bands come together by a by sometimes chance sometimes it's forced you know someone puts a an yeah. advert out and you build it that way around and one member leaves another one fills in and and it seems like from the start you've had a pretty solid like three you know and that's yeah. really good you know and i i, and I know that 
sort of listening to a few things that at the moment sort of the music industry is in one of those positions where the finances are a little bit of a challenge sometimes you know you, it's hard to make it work and blah 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 and i think in this scenario what's really good is actually you have um you know you, you're managing to make your way around the music industry in three you know it's a good number you can change 30 percent for okay. you 10% yeah. manager. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, no, zero, 12, 425. No, no, 425%. Yeah, zero for the manager at the minute. Zero for my... the... Excellent. Right. He's on holiday, yeah, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's on holiday, yeah. Disgraceful. How dare no, no, he go no, on no. holiday? Yeah, he have a break. But th this is it, right? And with a three-piece as well, you look at Cream, you look at all the bands that we love, they're all three-pieces, right? Yeah. And if you can make a three-piece sound massive, we find it's more impressive. Right. When we see a band of six or seven, we're like, well, you're going to make a big noise, the seven of you. But if you yeah. can make a big noise and hold people's attention with three of you, there's no hiding space. Right. No, and, no, uh, there's no hiding place. Yeah, no, you just you can't. You can't, you know, and, and we just we love being a three piece. Right. Cream, cream is a huge influence on us. Yeah. And we're nowhere near cream. Right. We're nowhere near as good as cream. <laughs> well, but, I mean, Ollie, Ollie looks right like Ginger, Ollie looks <laughs> like Ginger Baker, you know, Ollie looks like Ginger Baker. <laughs> And Luke plays like Jack Bruce, and I kind of try and masquerade as some one percent of a Clapton if I can, right? So it's we just love it, man. And the the, <laughs> Listen, the money side of masquerade as one percent of Clapton. I think that's pretty good, man. Matt, yeah, he's behind me there. You see, yeah, I can he's see like him. That. I can see yeah, him. What's yeah. on the other? What's in the other grid? That's cream. That's all the oh, albums. All cream. Cream. I'm actually. I'm in our manager's little office because my wife oh, nice. was kind of tuned in at um, my new home yet. But that's a signed picture of Clapton that I got him, and nice. uh, it's all the albums from Cream. So yeah, it's quite a nice you know, background. For... You know, while we're on it, while we're on it, we, we, I'm not gonna, I was going to talk about Cream, but then instead. You're the first cool. band I've had that's really mentioned their manager. Tell me about your manager. Uh, it's my dad, right? Um, <laughs> and he, and awesome. I, I tell you, yeah, I tell you why, right? Does he's, he still tell um, you what to do. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, he's the fourth member of of this band. He they've got a does, does all the crap that we don't want to do, right? Yeah. He works tirelessly. He retired twenty five odd years ago. And his day job is basically herding us like cats into <laughs> where we should be. He's a great sound. He's a great sounding board. Neil, Neil, you're going the wrong way. You're going yeah. the wrong way. But do you know what? He, he's not scared to tell us when we're not good. He's not scared to tell us we're making wrong decisions. Or he, he's a great person to go to. And he's always been like this when I was a kid, yeah. right? When I needed advice from him, he would never. He would never sugarcoat it. He'd just tell me. No. And it's invaluable. I mean, once, i tell you one story about him. Luke used to work in a school. Right. And the school was being really funny about Luke having time off. Yeah. Uh, Luke was like, look, Ron, can you come in and meet the principal and sit down with him and, oh, and tell, him, tell him about the band and tell him, you know, try and see if we can work a situation out. And my dad just, not in a not in a negative way or horror way, just ripped this guy apart with logic and a project management sense of what's going on, you know, because he was saying, right, the gigs are booked three months in advance. If we give you this much notice, can this be all right for Luke? We can work around it. What works for you? And this principal had no idea what was going no, on because he thought it was just this little band. That yeah. But we, it's deadly serious. And it, you have to separate the business from the art in a really mm, bad yeah. way to say, because we don't want to get drawn into how we get paid or the contractual side of things as well. He's not going to screw us over because it's my dad, right? Yeah. As well, because yeah, if absolutely. he does, there's bigger, there's bigger things at risk than the band. If he yeah, does, yeah, no, absolutely. That relationship is is probably yeah. the most important thing to him, and as yeah. well, helping his son. You know, uh, yeah, he's. I mean, you, you get him on and have a chat to him. He'll probably tell you more than I will, to be fair, on what it's like. We'll but he's. Um, he's... To, I'm going to add him to the list. I've got Ashley Bridge tomorrow night. They're yeah. doing a call, so I, and then screw it, let's do it. Yeah, nice yeah, it. it'll be, a, it'll be, a, he's never, I don't think he, you'll be the first person he's ever done a podcast with because I've never, no yeah. one's ever interviewed him to, to talk to about, know about it. Band management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, talked about how he is. But yeah, he, he, he looks after us and he keeps us, he's, he's a Glaswegian, right? So he's, de he's the most honorable and genuine man in my life. And I, I oh, respect that's really him. nice. That's just, oh, wait, it, it may, I tell you what, it, deal. No, I'll tell you what it is, right? He will, 
when we're good and when we're on fire, he tells us. And we and if he says we're on fire, we know it was incredible, right? When we're average, he goes, look, you can do better. You know, you can do better. You need to step up. So we're never sitting back and relaxing and going, that was great. He's going, look, go again, go higher. You got to go. You got to do this again. Um, and, but he does it in a way, and we, we have these in the, in the team of people around us. We, he does it in a way where he doesn't like, slate us. He's just like, look. Oh, wasn't he can be best? constructive, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't your best, wasn't it? Same with Trev, our producer, same with Whitney in PR, same with John in PR. So that the team we have around us is really small because and we trust them um, to tell us when we're not doing things right and to to be to big us up when we need big enough and we stick an arm around us when we need an arm around us and, and to give us a bollocking when we need a bollocking, right? It's it, that's what you need. You need those people in your team as a band. Yeah. Because and especially at the moment for us. A lot of great things are happening and a lot of people are telling us we're wonderful and a lot of people are telling us that was the greatest gig I've ever seen. And we know sometimes in our hearts that we can probably do more and go a bit better, but you need those people around you who are going to give you that just cold light of day honesty, man, because that's how you get better and that's how you keep your ego in check, you know? John, you know, that's probably the most honest assessment <laughs> anyone's ever told me about who their manager is. Now, I was listening and to- And he works for free. That's the key thing. <laughs> oh, I didn't mention that. He was being yeah. 10%, man, like I said before. So um, just just listening to a lot of that and dissecting a few very small pieces mm -hmm. from it. First thing is that father-son relationship that you've got. Mm. Now, if I was to restart my band, the first person I probably would have is my dad as my manager yeah. or my wife. I don't know yet. Yeah, Maybe true. my wife, she's a lot younger, but it's a question of whether you want to throw everything into one basket, you know. Um, she's she's very tough as well. So, you know, she's got that element. But my dad, my dad is always ready to give me the advice. No, yeah. son. No, son. I don't like that, son. Or my mum. Maybe my mum. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think family members, I think if you've got a real good connection with your family members and your mum and dad, like you said you have, that's a really good bond to have. You said that he's also willing to give you that, that tough advice. And, and again, listen to another podcast before that I was, what, you know, listening to, he was, they, they were saying that the manager sometimes needs to deliver the bad news and also yeah. deliver the, 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 that, that scenario of where it's not all sunshine and roses. Okay. Um, so it's amazing that you've got that, that already, and you've got all these, these jigsaw puzzle uh, pieces in place and you know, that you've, you've got that, you know, it seems like that Luke's got it sorted with his, his position in the band, you know, you've got it sorted that your dad's looking after the business side of it. So you can focus on the music side of it, because I, I think we, as musicians, when you're taking that step up from being a pub or a local band and you go in sort of what I would consider you guys to sort of a more of a regional stepping up to that band, yep. you know, you're going around and you tour in the UK and you're playing lots and lots of gigs, then you need someone to essentially take care of, like you said, the shit that you don't want to do. Because if you're bolting from three different gigs, you haven't got time to be doing the, the organizing in between yeah. and basically making that phone call to say, listen, X, Y, and Z, this has happened, this has happened, or we need this because this is broken or something. I don't know. You know, just these small like, things. And so it wrong. really does so make, wrong. you know, it, and that's what, listen, people get paid to do this. You know, so your yeah. dad's obviously doing it to support his son, to, to help him progress, to help the band progress. It's obviously because obviously, um, you know, like, like you said, that he's, he's, it's an integral part. The other people are an integral part of the band. So, you know, you need that, you need that team around you. And it's amazing. 100%. But just one more thing before I was going to, my dad is a massive um, oh, Mark Boland fan. He, he oh, loves... Yeah. He just, he, he, he freaking, he's always like putting T-Rex on. And I'm like, dad. So maybe my dad and your dad share quite a common, what did your dad do before he retired then? He was, uh, so he started off as a, as an engineer in, right, Jack okay. in Land, Land Rover, right? So he's a, he's, he's very methodical, very logical, yeah. thinks things through, so talented with how his brain works and he sees yeah. things that we don't see coming yeah he then moved into like it and project yeah. management 
like so right. one of his one of his projects i remember when i was a kid was that he had to get all the computers ready for the y2k the year 2000 because they thought you know everything was going to fall over so oh. he had a really he had a big job millennium and, bug yeah exactly i remember i went that right on, yeah i know like, that didn't no happen. Bug. <laughs> yeah what happened no planes were going to fall out of the sky and everything exactly, weren't they? yeah um, no. I remember once when I was really when I think I was in junior school and there was like a tour of like Jaguar Land Rover the car factory in the UK obviously my dad knew I was going in with the whole school and we were being taken round by this guy yeah and he was obviously just giving a thing and what was the guy said, called remember his name I have no idea what the guy was called was I was quite Banner? was it Banner? No, no I don't know probably he was a lovely yeah. guy um but he were taken around there was like all my schoolmates and stuff like that and I saw my dad walking down and the guy went okay everyone can we please set to the side someone important's coming and i ran right i ran to my dad because it was my dad right and the guy dad, went, yeah, oh, of my course. God, what are you doing and i was just that's my dad and he was like <laughs> oh my dad yeah and he was like oh mr murdoch and my dad, my dad was like that was the first time i realized that oh my dad's quite important in this organization oh wow that was cool oh there yeah you go. it was quite cool and he was and he but he's he's very shy um he's the the thing about him is is that sometimes we we get too excited as the band with the opportunities coming right yeah. so someone comes to us and say look come and tour in southeast asia tomorrow we'll be like yes yeah, do it right and go! because straight go, to japan yeah exactly who cares about money it doesn't matter about yeah. visas let's yeah. do it we want to do it right and he'll sit there and go hang on boys you're not even headlining in the uk so why are you then going to are you thinking about the fans in the UK and what does it look like if you go out, go over to this country and headline and you've not done one in the UK and he brings us back down to earth and be like, this doesn't feel right for this reason. So it's, it's a great wow. level. It's a great leveler. Now I make things probably more tough because we do have that father son relationship, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk every day, every single day about stuff. He drives me with stuff. If I haven't done something, I will drive him as well. And there's times where, me and him have been having arguments about stuff but and it was probably more when we first started and stuff like but it was because i was tripping into the business side of things and maybe he was stepping into the music side of things right okay so we so sat down and that made, divide, yeah yeah and we, we made a really easy rule right and we still stick to it and i right. still trip into the business side of things because i'm an idiot um <laughs> we said right you do the business i'll do the music right that's it yeah. So, and whenever we're starting or I'm starting to trip into the business side, because to be fair, he never encroached on the music. He goes, you do the music, I do the business. I went, yeah, okay, I hear you. And I kind of get back in my box. Get back in your uh, box. Yeah, but it works. It works It works really well. But it's no. because of the man he is rather than who we are, <laughs> you know? No, again, like, that's insane because, you know, you've got that clear, uh, well, he's got that clear message you've not quite got it yet but uh, I'm you know <laughs> listen you're you're still no and i mean this in the nicest possible way to your dad i'll take no respect from no, it no, 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 no. what i mean is is that you know without your without you creating the music the manager's not really needed and that and i mean that in the nicest yeah. possible way so sometimes yeah, totally. you know it's important that the music is driving what the what the manager wants to do you know and, and that you've all got a vision of how it wants to go and just going back to that about you know joking aside i think if you did get an offer to go and play in japan or somewhere crazy you know you've i think you've got to look at these things especially if you've got a following out there and you okay it might not be logistically you might not be able to make, you may just break even. You may have to keep the costs low. I, d I don't know. I don't know how it would work. And I don't know if you would do that. I don't know if you would only say, no, why would we go over to break even, but, you know? Yeah, that, this was a real, real, this actually happened, mate. So this okay. happened. Um, tell me, tell the listeners. It wasn't Southeast Asia for the record. It was, oh. it was Europe. So we, we were off, we were off the 10 day tour in Europe. Okay. And um Initially, when it, you know, there was no contracts in place, there was nothing that was um, official. But yeah. from the very word get-go, he was like, something doesn't feel quite right here, um, but let's sit down and look at it. And it was actually, we had a band meeting, and me, me and Luke were pushing, like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And uh, we had a band meeting, and Ollie actually said, look, guys, because Ollie's done a lot more touring and on a lot yeah, higher yeah. level. We'll go uh, on to Ollie um, in a minute. We'll go on to Ollie. <laughs> we'll he, go on to Ollie. He sat down and went, look, Ollie, Ollie said, 
I've just done six gigs in four weeks and it's shattering. You're talking about doing 10 gigs in 10 days. He goes, you won't survive because no. your voice will that's out, not right? fun uh, yeah and it was like all yeah. the big tours and the professional tours it's always yeah. two or three days with a couple of days or maybe two then a break or maximum yeah, exactly. i've seen is four but then they've got like a four day break they they, they really do take care of themselves yeah and that's you know? it right you, you, you've got to take after you carry mental health you've got to take care of your instruments your voice getting over there forget about the break and even you know we would do it for break and even it's more that what does this do for us mentally? What does this do for us as a band and stuff like that? And then oh, all okay. the other stuff. So we sat down and went, this doesn't feel right for us at this moment in time. You know, and that that's a difficult decision because what we're having at the moment is we're saying, we're finding that we're having to say no to more things because we're getting the opportunities where we've never been in that position because it's always like, do you want to do a gig? Yes. Do you want okay. to go here? Yes. So right. So it's, and that's a really nice way to look at it because one it's a time thing one it's a busy thing one it's a is this on the plan and the strategic vision of where we're going as a band yeah. as well and it, <clears throat> we do that you know so what was the reason you chose not to do it the timing wasn't right, right. Um, it was going to encroach on some studio time um ollie's schedule couldn't fit around it as well and we wanted okay. to do it with ollie um the cost was kind of the last thing we were probably right. going to break but it, it was more we're a big believer we, we follow kind of three things when we make decisions. We listen to our head for the logic. We listen to our yeah. heart for emotion. And we listen to our gut for that kind of instinct. Mm. If all three are on the money, yeah. um, go for it. If two out of the three are, uh, okay, we're on the money yeah. with the head and the heart, but the gut feels better, you can still go for it, but you mm. have to realize you could be walking into a disaster. Um, if you've got one of the three, yeah. it's you know, because something's off, right? Be Could it you logic. not reduced it a bit? Could you not maybe done six or five? We tried to, we looked at that. We looked at that, yeah. but then the eight was very much, no, you've got to do this. So then, right, and, and okay. then we were like, okay. So, I mean, it's not, it's, a, it's not, we never say never, you know, it was just not right now. And I think yeah. we, we sat down as a band two years ago and, and kind of plotted out everything we wanted to achieve and the timescales we wanted to do it even down to the image, even down to the types of songs we want to write and the kind of band we want to be yeah. and the compass we uh, want to stick to. And at the moment, we're about a year ahead of where we need to be, which is incredible. Um, but it's, yeah, yeah, it just felt too soon. Of, it felt right. too soon for us at, the, at, this, at this juncture. Well, that say. sounds like a sensible decision, you know, and yes. especially if you've all sat down and you're all happy with that decision. So I tell you what, we'll... we'll what we'll do is go it will lead into your music but and we'll talk right, about cool. Ollie's little what Ollie does as on well. On the side. On the, on the <laughs> side. Well, side pieces, yeah? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um and we'll we'll save that one for a little bit later for those that are okay. interested. Okay. <laughs> so obviously very seventies vibe. Yeah. So music, big cream, like you said. Yeah. Um, Free. Bad company. Yeah, exactly. So why, why, why that, why that sound? Why, 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 why cream? You know? I mean, do you know what? <laughs> me, me and Luke oh, are... Sorry, just to add, can I just add, well, uh, just add, I, I've obviously, um, I've listened to a bit of your stuff. And if I'm going honest, I think you're probably the most, the probably the softest rock band I've had on. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, Quite heavily, you know, in terms yeah. of the, that, that, that what we would go you're a proper radio rock band you're designed for big audiences you know there's I'll, absolutely I'll, I'll no reason <laughs> why i can't see you playing manchester apollo in a few years you know um, uh, headlining that. you know to what two thousand people though to apollo like great yeah. venue it's got that tiered element you've got a bit of seating at the top it, it's a great and i think i think it's a, a credit to you guys of what you've achieved you know for example i've had um oh what's the song i'm, I'm gonna i'm sorry i'm gonna have to to, to get no, you, there was one do uh down by the river i love yeah. that and it's got that cool riff in and that's amazing so yeah, so, man, yeah dude, but um, we finish on that one we know we finish on that one and get everyone singing great on it. song and it's it had the most plays hasn't it let's be honest yeah, it's had the most it plays just, it, so it, 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 but yeah you, you're you're spot on right you're yeah. absolutely spot on um thanks we're not, have you heard yeah, that no, you're, no, I'm spot it, on it, yeah, you are spot on with it because you know the, there'll be no three-minute guitar solos, there'll be no long intros. Um, yeah. It's just not who we are. Um, a lot of people struggle with us from a genre perspective because you know we can do an acoustic song, we can do a riff song, 
we can do bass solos. We can just do, you know, an acapella moment as well. And they kind of sit yeah. there and go, where do you sit? And we we're like, yeah. we don't yeah. care because... No, that's good. You don't want to be put in a sort of A box. Yeah, you know? I, but it's it's what it is, right? I mean, I, I, we never sat there and said we want to write 70s type style music. That kind of came yeah. around a lot of people were quoting. Maybe that's like, come by by the chance that you come down and you sort of know, you sound a bit like... I think well, it is. I think, you know, we, we wear a lot of Paisley. Yeah. We have a lot of retro... Yeah. vibe about us on stage you know and stuff like that luke will wear a kaftan or i will we'll have beads and chains and stuff yeah. on so we get it totally get it i think what we came to is we wanted to be kind of like riff based euphonic or euphoria yeah. rock, right that was we wanted to create an emotion and we wanted to because that's how we write everything we write is stuff that's happened to us and yeah. stuff that happens to our friends so and if that resonates with people, great. Some people will love it. Some people won't. But that's music, and that's why music's so beautiful. Yeah. If we no, like absolutely. the same stuff, it would be boring. No, right? no. I mean, There's so many different genres. And I've recently discovered. I know this is going to sound hilarious. I've recently discovered K-pop. Right now, ah, no, a great, thirty-six-year-old grown man. Honestly, there's this band called Dreamcatcher at the moment, and there's this song called Boca that I keep watching the video to it. And they're obviously they're doing all the dance moves, and then they do this little thing at the end of called Boca, and I'm like, that's so cool. Or they do do this actually, they do like this, yeah. and I'm like, uh, I don't know what the hell's going on, and I don't know why I like this so much. So then I dig into their Spotify playlist, then I'm listening to this. So I'm, I'm at the moment, I'm currently going through a cycle of you guys yeah megadeth <laughs> nice. megadeth and, and k-pop dream catcher and then uh, and, and this k-pop playlist i found and then baby metal which is just like you know it's, so if anyone wants to know how how izzy's mind works it's like oh that's good oh i like that you know i'm almost like a kid in a sweet shop that just gets the marshmallows the the sour That's... lollipops the cola bottles and then gets the fizzy the, the little space the the discs with the phone oh yeah, yeah the melt yeah got yeah the, yeah. the ufo that... thing fucking things the space the, disc thing that's the beauty of music mate that's the beauty of music yeah. right toxic by britney spears is oh. a banging song dun, 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 dun. Mate, anyone you play that to it's just it's got a bit of groove yeah. it's got a great line and stuff like but people are, oh no it's pop there's some jolene by yeah. dolly Parton. great song right islands in the it just if well, you they get stuck if, in your head uh, yeah they, everyone they're knows what to sing toxic jolene yeah. jolene exactly. jolene jolene yeah. it gets stuck in your head it's hooky it's catchy you know we'd, we'd, we'd never probably write something like that but we the, the thing about it is if you like anything, rap, death metal, core metal, I don't know. I, I went to see, I tell you where, I was at the Manchester Apollo a couple of weeks ago because Luke and our best mate Chalmers took me devil? to see the Mars, the Mars Volta. Yes, I saw the post that you said that you right? and the boys were happy, just going off, enjoying some music and, you know, the band, I mean, having a good never time. To them. I, they literally put on the CD in the car for me and those two, they're diehard Mars Volta fans and they were just all over the shop loving it. And yeah. I'm like, I sat back and just witnessed a room full of people. I was probably hated by people that couldn't get tickets. And I just sat back and watched everyone engrossed in this band. And it was one of the magical moments of my life because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was going on. And I just saw this band at the peak of their powers playing to people who adored them. And I was like, I had no idea you existed three, three days ago. Right. And I'm like, this is music. This is this is how it works. And I've listened to the stuff now. Some of it I really dig, some of it I don't dig. But it's because yeah. I don't get it. Right. And I I'm not, you know, that that kind of style of music. it doesn't evoke an emotion in me. But no, I no, no, that's fair enough. And, and not everything does. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But it was class. It was utterly class. But yeah, musically, yeah, I completely see the seventies thing for us and how, how we go about it. It's um we were conscious of the fact that we wanted to we wanted to portray an image of that retro that 60s that 70s because we love cream the beatles the stones it's what yeah. it's what we love right so it felt the most authentic without trying to copy them the small faces stevie marriott you know yeah. humble pie all those kind of bands and stuff we were like that's if if we had to choose what bands we'd be in that's where it would be yeah. someone put on facebook the other day a picture of um i think it was oh who wasn't cream it was ginger baker and clapton 
can't remember who it was, but they're all in like it was like Woodstock, and they're all in like flares and flowery jumpers and t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> Someone said found an early picture of Blue Nation. Now that to me is job done. That we've we've accomplished what we wanted, right? The image, the image. Job people, done. Retire. Yeah, we're done. We don't <laughs> need the money. We can retire. But it, it's just. You've got to be authentic and you've got to do what you love because if you yeah. do what you love and it's authentic, people will, will be okay. If you if we got up there in leather jackets and, and shades on, people would see through it from a mile away. We've tried the leather jackets years and years ago. It didn't work because we're not that band. We're not that cool band. We're not that aloof band. We're not that indie band. We're not the band that everyone will find as an underground. You're absolutely bang on with a band that may get on radio and may play you know Manchester Apollo and get that yeah. much bigger. Um, but if not... We love where we are as well. You know, it's, the, it's a the beautiful... honesty is amazing. It is humbling. It's, it's what we are, mate. It's who we are. Um, we get from the industry, we get a lot of shit for it. Um, a lot. Why? Um, why, do, why cannot... you get shit for what? Because they can't put you in a box, or they get you get shit uh, because... for this honesty. For this honesty, I... right? And, yeah. and if you if you look on our social media posts and stuff, I th- I did a social media post about two months ago about how much money we made from one of the gigs. And, and how much uh, did you make if you don't mind me asking 50 quid 50 quid and right okay we, so it was a profit and it was, okay it, it's not it, no, bills, well but... 50 quid but the, it, the we got a fee because the promoter looks after us which is yeah. good but we had to pay for fuel we had to get the van it was in um like it was about three and a half hours in one direction right and then three and a half hours back right and so we, we booked a hotel a premier in right so it wasn't yeah. flash did you get breakfast get at least uh, yeah, but we had to pay for it, 12 quid each, right? And so it's premium about the price. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then we, I put this out and just said, look, just so everyone doesn't think we are making it and all that kind of stuff, this is what we got on this gig. And it was packed yeah. and it was amazing. And the, the images of us on stage and being rock stars and looking really cool is fantastic. This is what we made. And we got kind of a half and half response. Half the people said, oh, the... The rockers from back in the day would have driven back and da 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 da. And I was like, mate, that it, for our mental health, you can't. I'm going to dig this post out now. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you as well. Don't worry. And it, it it's there. And the so other people said, oh no, keep going. You know, we'll buy some merch. We're like, no, no, this is not about giving us money. This is about this is about what we do and how we do it and that realism. Yeah. Sorry for, one, the, for those that are watching. Those that are listening on podcast, you won't be able to tell, but I'm actually just searching through Blue Nation's Facebook page here for this post. I'll, I'll send it to you, mate. I can, but the other one, I'll tell you, another, while you're searching, it was about two months ago. There you go. Right. That'll help you. It's in June, it another, May. Yeah, May. The other one happened. We were promoting our sing, first single, Strangers, and I got a private message saying, you're promoting your music too much. Um, and this was a pre-saved link, right, that you had to click on and you can... You can add it to playlist. You can add it to Spotify. I'll do whatever. Yeah. The, the key thing for this for us is we we can sit there and not not talk about this stuff. But I did a post about it saying, look, if you don't like us, if you don't like the fact that a band who have got a new single coming out promotes it and asks you to do this, then that's absolutely fine. Just don't do it. Yeah. Don't follow us. Don't be in part of our family. Don't be part of our gang. Don't don't pre-save it. But I refuse to spend thousands of pounds on uh, the the recording process and then the PR process and everything goes with it. Not to say, hey guys, would you mind clicking on this link, right? Because we have a big thing in this band where we don't um, have tons and tons of merch and tons of tons of CDs and can't say buy this, buy this, buy this because times are hard for people so every yeah. single we put out we put on the streaming site so you can download it if you want to spend that money or you can listen for free spotify whatever right mm. and we do that deliberately because we don't want to be that band that charges for you know just talking to us or listen to our music any albums we charge for but again it's on the streaming site so if you you can't afford it you don't need to because we've been in that position where we've wanted to buy that latest band's album or whatever but you couldn't because you haven't got the cash, No, exactly. Right? And, and I mean, if I'm going to be honest, just going <laughs> back to I, I did, I did flick through and didn't quite get to it. So I, I'm going to I'll find it as well. It. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it's crazy that, you know, people will criticize you for being that honest. Okay. And, yeah. You know, it, it, it's a point of where, where, where do you draw the line, firstly, with that? Where, where do you, you know, are you, are, are you, 
what's the definition of making it? What's the definition of you're on your way? You know, you, you're, you're, you're clearly in love with your art. You know, you clearly enjoying yourself as a band, you know, yes. Okay. You might, you, if you can make a living out of it, then that's fantastic. And that's, yeah. that's where I think if someone said to me, you know, when I started my band, you know, four divided by two, which obviously is on, I'm in the UAE, the drummer's in the UK now, and we don't really speak. Uh, he's busy doing what he does. And I've got my life out here. I'd absolutely love to do a band. And I keep saying to myself, every week I talk to a musician on here and I think to myself, should I do it? And I'm, I'm thinking about doing it, but as a single, just following the, uh, uh, the single process instead of yeah. releasing something a month and just seeing maybe, you never know, but I've got to then play and, and, you talk about, I'm not a great guitarist. I'm a rhythm guitarist, which can play a couple of lead lines. And when yeah, I did, same, <laughs> when, when I did, well, I disagree because I've listened to your songs. <laughs> but when I was playing, I'm, and you know, I, I talk, when I played live, I wasn't particularly that good. But, and you talk about image, you wear a baseball oh. cap, a t-shirt, a pair of jeans and a pair of trainers usually a pair of Adidas trainers because I like the comfort. Uh, you, uh, Ultra Boost, skinny jeans. Yes, I am a little bit overweight. And yes, I am 36, but I still wear skinny <laughs> jeans. And, I, and my wife says to me, you just need to stop wearing skinny jeans. I'm like, no, I don't care. I'm wearing skinny jeans. If I want to wear skinny jeans, you're right, going to yeah. stop me from wearing skinny jeans, right? And a baseball yeah. cap. Yes, still like I'm in my 20s. But, and that's the image I've always been. And you know, you, what is an image? What is rock and roll? What, what tells you what to, who tells you what to wear? If you feel comfortable wearing that, you know, then you're happy. But same with CDs. When we did our, we did, I did a t-shirt and CD combination. Okay. Yeah. And we, it paid for the recording. It paid for the mastering. We got it mastered by this guy in Germany who did a great job of the EP. And it actually gave us a little bit of money to invest in things that we wanted to. Then COVID hit and it killed it all, you know? Yeah. So I don't yeah. think anyone begrudged. When I said to people, listen, would you like to buy a CD? And they go, oh, well, send me a link to the music. And I'm like, listen, you supporting me. You've, this is a single. I'm not going to send the rest of it because you could, that's what the, the EP is for. And some people are like, yeah. oh, but I don't want to spend money if I don't like yeah. the music. And I'm like, that's fine. But you're doing it don't to spend support money. the band. That's yeah. not what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to support the band. But the amount of people that, throw, that just said, there's 15 quid. Yeah. It, it, I support your music. I support you as a person. And loads of people gave me feedback and said, this is great. You know, we were sort of a hybrid of sort of without picking myself up nine inch nails sort of seven oh, inch, yeah. you know uh the white stripes two piece royal blood they were our sort of our main yeah, um, yeah. like influences and you know i forever talk about that little band it was it was it's such a it was it only existed for such a small period yeah yeah COVID, how long it oh, took. Mate, I, I tell you now do it start the band right start the band yourself for, it, for the and this but it's is only it. going to be a two piece again because I yeah, don't want that, to work with any more than one with a drummer. Maybe then, a synth player. Maybe I'll have three tops. Yeah, do it, and I tell you why. I tell you why you should do it, right? Because life's too short, and and this is this is the thing that I got trapped in a lot as well by, and I, I call it watching the numbers, right? Where you watch the Facebook likes, you watch the stream downloads, you watch. Oh the, yeah. <laughs> oh man, and you just, and I got, the worst. <laughs> oh mate, I got lost last it. week. <laughs> yeah, I got lost in it, and I tell you, right? I watched. I can't remember. I can't remember who it was. It might. It might have been Simon Sinek. Who, if you've not, yeah. if you've not seen his, his talks and stuff, check him out, man. Right, the okay. guy is genius, right? And he's a business guy, right? And I think I seem to think it was him, because obviously we live stream every Thursday, and we started that in the pandemic because yeah. I was going insane because we weren't playing gigs, we weren't going outside no. the house. No. It was so I said, "What can I do?" And I live stream, and I got two or three people coming on one of them was my mum right one week i think we got 100 right and i was like "Woo, this is good and then i started getting disappointed because i was only getting 10 or so people we get about 50 people across all the channels every week i've been doing it it's the 176th week i have done it every single week since the start of pandemic every thursday and I've done it on my birthday. I've done it on Christmas Eve. I've done it on New Year's Eve. When I go on holiday, I still do it. If we can't do it because of schedules, I then do like a live from the hotel room or a live from the um, from the festival. Yeah. But yeah. this is what someone someone said. Uh, I read was if you're in your front room, right, and you have twenty people standing in your front room, you're going to be like, "This is busy." 
why have I got 20 people? So if you have 20 people watch your podcast, if you have five people, if you have one person, that's still, yeah. that's still someone, right? That's still someone listening. That's still someone going. And chasing the numbers means nothing. It means nothing, right? And there's that stat about podcasts that I think you have to do, what is it, 27 podcasts before you get to a stage where it starts to get traction or starts oh, okay. to get... I think it... It, it, this, this is it one. and the stat is and then the other stat is and I, this could be such bullshit mate I, I know there's stats around it but most people give up after like 12 because they don't see the massive growth see and this, i i put this on hold because of my job out here i got a new yeah. job i got a job out here yeah yeah it took over it's it's very intense but I promised that myself, happened. I always promised myself I would come back to it. And I, yeah. I was sat there a month ago. I just opened a site out here and I'm like, right, I'm going to yeah. start the podcast. When it settles, just, I get my Sundays back. I'm going yeah. to do it. And the work phone isn't going off. My work phone is still here. Keep an eye on things. Yeah. You know, it, it never stops. As I always say, it, but, oh, start the band, mate, start the band creatively. Yeah. Creatively, it will do you the world of good. Even if I suppose you just keep it an online thing, just right, just do it. But stuff. don't don't chase anything, right? Do it for your enjoyment and your own authenticity. Yeah, see, if I do it for my enjoyment, I'll probably really enjoy it and just go. You'll really it. enjoy it, and people will really enjoy it as well. And my mate, I got really really pissed off with one of my best mates, Chalmers, just in start of the pandemic when you know we couldn't get arrested before the pandemic, right? Yeah. Now we've got beautiful people like yourself saying, can we do podcasts, can we do interviews? I've done five interviews this week, and I'm like, I have no idea how these yeah. people are famous, right? 16-year-old Neil, who started playing guitar in his bedroom, yeah. would die right now. He'd be like, this is amazing. Yeah. Keep oh, going. Welcome. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But the I same for play me for people play. saying yes that come on, because those yeah. people that just give me the time. I did message one band the other day, and he said, oh, our schedules are busy for the next two months and i'm like bullshit absolute bullshit they're well, not working out. That's i'm what not I, i'm not I, i'm not going to name the band because... I, I, i'll take right i'll tell you now i'll say it for you it's bullshit right and i'll tell you why it's bullshit because they are thinking how that will not help us and it's bullshit because i did a i did a podcast um last week and the guys have got like 200 followers of, they are the nicest guys on earth and they called us the next beatles right which wow. we're not the next. We're not the I next. Beatles. Cream, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'll take that as well. That's going on the poster. And I said you look like John Lennon, so that's an issue. I'll take that as well. Um, <laughs> but if you, if you're good to people, they're good to you. My best mate Charmin said to us, one of our best mates said, just before the pandemic, we were in the pandemic and we're all on Call of Duty, right? And uh, he goes, happy. yeah, it's amazing. And he was like you guys are going to get to the Manchester Apollo and you might get big in Europe. And I'm like, nah, we're going to play Wembley. We're going to be in Glasgow. And then I sat there and thought about it and went, why am I so against that level of success? Because that's huge. It that's is huge. huge. I saw Volby at, at Apollo and they were yeah. insane. And, and, I, and I'd only just gotten into them because my friend recommended mm. them. And I tell you what, like the devil's bleeding crown. And when I was listening to, um, you know, for Evict, and I was like, you know, the guy's got this Elvis voice in this yeah. hard rock band. And you're thinking, this is insane. And they were busy and they were, it was sold out. It was, it was crazy. This is it, right? Every, every band has these lofty goals of playing Wembley stadium or going on this or yeah. doing that. And they forget the journey they're on. Right. Yesterday at the festival, we had a lady travel from France to come see us. There and, you we go. Were in, and we were in London. See, and this is it. Gary it's, said from Dead Blonde Stars that someone came from Sweden to watch them in Scotland. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it's that's like, insane. People are actually traveling the world to see to you see guys you. play. It's you insane. Know? And so if you if you if you're just focused on Wembley or you're just focused on the Manchester Apollo, you miss that. Yeah. And they are the moments that you've got to enjoy because the moment you get to the Apollos or the Wembleys, you can't stand at the merch stand. You can't meet those people because you'd be there forever, right? And there's 2,000 no, exactly. people. Hello yeah. for everyone. So we, we really always talk to ourselves and we talk about those moments together and we relive them and we enjoy them. And it is an absolute privilege yeah. to be in this yeah. band. And it's a privilege to speak to people like yourself who will give me the time to waffle on about where we want to be and what we're trying to do, right? Well, because... 
That's, Honestly, what we want. That's what we want. It's it's great, and it's great that you're very humble about the position that you are in, and that. Um, and you know, I think yes, I suppose you could call this media. You could call this. Um, whatever you like, but this is just me chatting to to different musicians about their experiences, about what they enjoy, about their music, yeah. about uh, you know their writing and the creative process, and and however the chats go, because like I said, there's no script here. There's just me with a couple I of notes it. about the band, and you know that's what it is, and that's what have it. Have a listen, mate, to our live album, Live from the Front Room. Well, I was going to talk about that. I've, got, I've, yeah. I've, I've noticed you've got a live album, two albums, a couple of EPs yeah. and a live album. Um, yeah. Why did you do a live album? Most because people don't do a live album until, you, until, until you're huge. Until you do, well, the thing is, yeah, until I know. Blue Nation live that, at Wembley, no, it, Wembley Arena. <laughs> there you go. See? Yeah. You've got the name. It's there. But no, because we, we did the live streams, when we come out of lockdown, we've, we've created this beautiful community online who every thursday will tune in and they'll chat and they've become friends right so i'm so incredibly proud of that we call what them the blue meeting. uh 7 p.m on a thursday night so 7 p.m on a thursday blue nation stream so that is for me that's 10 o'clock at night here by that well, time can, i've usually yeah, finished we, a 14 hour day <laughs> yeah no leave, no no but it's them. fine i might have yeah, to I'm gonna just tune in one week i will yeah, tune in yeah. if i say i'm gonna tune in i will tune in it's Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and this right. community we've got of people that now talk to each other, and they meet up at gigs, and we do like a Blue Meanie meetup, and like where we just we, there's no gig, there's no because we realise they pay a lot of money to see us, so we go and have a beer with them or whatever yeah. for an evening in a bar or something. But the the whole ethos about it is you've got to give something back. And when we were coming out of lockdown, we said, well, wouldn't it be great to recreate my front room in a gig situation um, and invite everybody? So that's what we did. And then we thought, oh, that's cool. Should we, should we just record it? And then if you go on YouTube, you'll see some of the videos. And we had my couch and we had like pictures and plants from my front room. And the, the, the setting was like the front room, but we were playing it and they all came and they loved it and we recorded it. And we said, right, we're not going to charge. We're just going to stick it out on the streaming sites um, so people can have it. And if you listen to that album, it what you get from us on stage is what you get now from me. It's just drivel. <laughs> that <kind of> comes <laughs> out, right? um, but that's so what? That, when that, I listen back to this later, I'm going to be like, God, this is this is awful, Winnie. This got, is awful. <laughs> we need to edit Neil. Yeah, I told you, you're going to have to shut me up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's cool, man. You know, it, it, do you know one of the things that I've found is most people that come on here just happen to just chat away, and that's what that's what it wanted to be. It's just the chat, you know. It, if 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 I was doing this live, I'd have a couple of pints, you know. Um, yeah. Well, well, how do I say that? So, uh, it, it, it's it's a you've got a, one of those very rare uh, personalities, mate, where you I feel very relaxed with you, and this is the first you. time I've met you same on your email and stuff like that it was very chilled it was this thank it, you yeah you know, and that's Try not that to makes too serious on the email <laughs> no no that makes it easier for for people like me because because we're so relaxed if we get so where did the band name come from yes and it's like that's okay right, we're answering this one again no worries <laughs> it's, uh, which is no, fine no, no no i don't i'm not and i don't mind answering those questions but when the interviewer <laughs> is so rigid it's like you're gonna get a rigid interview but when you say talk about what you want, and we go ask us what you want. You get this. Yeah, conversation. I know. And one of the criticisms I've had is that I don't ask any. Sometimes I don't really ask any questions about the band. And I was oh. like, yeah, but you. But the thing is, is ultimately this is a, a chat. About that, that's the manager facetiming me. That's the oh, manager yeah. facetiming oh, me. Oh, there we go. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> just gonna have no, to wait. Yeah, he's waiting. He's waiting. So I, I tell you what, then, just one of the things I did notice is that you've supported Chris Barris, Chris Barris Band. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, I love Chris Barris Band. And yeah. I really try to get Chris Barris on the... So I saw it and I emailed his label again this morning. Mask yeah. label. I was like, maybe this time he'll be free. Now, uh, John Quantrill, who is from Stormbringer, he, yeah. His band got Chris Barris directed one of the videos. And I said to JP, oh. I, said, I wonder if I could ask JP to ask Chris if he could get because he's obviously got his telephone number here. And, you know, 
like I sometimes um I just dropped an email to like Blaze Bailey last year and obviously he's, yeah, yeah. he had his heart attack and he's probably still not well so I've not really messaged and thought yeah, I'm yeah. still sensitive to people's health conditions and things like that. but I was thinking about this the other day I was watching another one I thought oh, I'm just going to email their management and see if they'll come on and I'm like and the amount of people that yeah. I've, that's was weird about that band that said they didn't have time you know, I, and the thing is, as well, the way I do things is very much email. Yeah, we'll do it. That's a date. Do you want to do it? These, no, I can't. I, if I can do this day, and I'll try and fit it in. You know, I'm three hours ahead. It helps a little bit with schedules because yeah, sometimes, yeah. even though it's 11 o'clock at night for me, if someone wants to come in at eight, I can stay until half 12, one o'clock in the morning. I'll still do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's one that I did at like midnight last uh, on the last set. And having those people that just want to come on, have a little chat, yeah, talk a bit about the band, yeah. but, you know, and that's it. So, so I, we need to tell this bit. So, Ollie Jefferson, the drummer of Blue Nation, <laughs> is the drummer in Robert Plant's band. Is that correct? Yeah. So the band's called Saving Grace. What Robert the... Plant is Saving Grace. <laughs> mate, that's mate, amazing. I tell you what, I, this is an incredible story of how we got this, this right? Insane. So. Ollie, Ollie was in Blue Nation when he was 16 years and years and years ago. And he, he moved to Thailand, fell in love. I told him not to. And it, it all went horribly wrong. And he came back. And then... Oh, sorry, he, he, Yeah, no, he's, he, he, Ollie is well and truly landed on his feet. Don't you worry. And he oh, came back. sorry. <laughs> Take no, it back. Don't be sorry. No, he's <laughs> stupid. Sorry. He, should gone, he should have gone to Thailand. Boy, he came Oliver. back <laughs> and uh, he, he met lovely Susie Deanne, who's also in Robert Plant's band. And she is the greatest singer of our generation. And, and I know that is a big claim. That is a bold, that's a bold mate, comment, that. Mate, mate, honestly, honestly, she goes... To, to Robert Plant's band, though, I'm not going to lie. She, she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Planty, right? And and that's Plant, right? So, and in Robert some Plant cases... Plant still sing, though. That's yeah, big. But they're called Saving Grace, and they're just about to tour Italy. Um I'm as well there's nothing out. i think they're 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 working on stuff behind the scenes but if you get a chance to to check them out or to go on youtube and check out saving grace robert yeah. plant saving yeah. grace susie Ann. but how it came about right so robert wanted susie in the band and they've got two guitarists no bass player and ollie took his wife susie to the uh show uh, to the uh, rehearsal and ollie's sitting in the car waiting for her and the drummer didn't turn up. So Sue's like, well, my fella's a drummer. Do you want him just to sit in and just keep us going kind of thing? And Rob was like, yeah, no worries. That's how he got the gig. <laughs> I mean, how amazing is that, that he's there and he's just like sitting in helping and Planty turns around and goes, I'm fucking to... blown. I know. Shit right? the and head. Are... Oh. I know. And they are the nicest people and they are... Planty included, man, because Ollie's obviously got us tickets and the after shows and stuff, and he's this is he wild. Just, he just gravitates right, and he's very chilled out. He's very he, obviously he knows he's Robert Plant, right? Yeah, so, of course he does. Ollie, it's Ollie, easy yeah. to be a prick when you're. Oh no, to... he's the nicest could guy. Be like a Robert Plant. Yeah. Oh no, nice. Honestly, honestly, he's the nicest guy because. Ollie, I'm standing there and I'm like, I'm, I am a huge Led Zepp fan, right? And it's Robert fucking. You, are you, do you get starstruck? Be honest. Mate, I, well, I tell you, I'll tell you exactly what happened, right? So Ollie, <laughs> Ollie and Susie are standing next to us with me and my wife, and we're standing there. And Planty kind of walks into the the after show, and Ollie goes, "Oh, I'll go get Rob." And I'm like, "Oh fuck, right." I'm like, "Just don't say anything stupid and don't fanboy." As I said, he gets that all the time. He, you know, so just don't be like everybody else. Just don't be like, just Neil. I can see like this everybody. coming. Right, hell, right? And I'm thinking, just, just, he's in a band. He's just a dude, right? And I'm, I'm talking to myself. Ollie goes over to him and he starts walking towards me and my fucking brain melts, right? And he walks it's up to me and he goes, he goes, hello, Neil. And I'm like, hello, Robert. And I, the first thing out of my mouth was, why the fuck have you got him in your band? <laughs> about Ollie. And he's like, I don't know. I wanted his wife. <laughs> and I was like, I could have been a lot worse. But I was like, and I just then talked about the show. And he was, he was so sweet. And he was really nice. He was uh, so nice. F funny enough, years ago, you have the same, same story. I, uh, 
I went to see uh, The Darkness at Man- uh, uh, No, I went to see the, sorry, not The Darkness. I went to see uh, Hot Leg when oh, yeah. obviously that period where the the, the darkness were together J- justin did uh hot leg um dan his brother did stone gods with with the rest yeah, of yeah. basically the other half of the darkness at the time so i went to see hot leg and uh i was they went to see the liverpool bar fly which is closed now which is such a shame because oh, wow. it was a great little venue right but oh, anyway yeah. i was i i used to drive <laughs> <laughs> this this horrendous like white Kia van, like half van, nice. half Kia Pride van, right? It looks awful. It, if <laughs> anyone that's at home, just take a second to listen or Google a Kia, a Kia Pride van. It's this awful little box thing, okay? So I'm driving home, uh, going through Liverpool, driving uh, sort of, I think I parked somewhere. And I, I, I thought I'll drive past the bar. I wonder for the bar. Anyway, next day I see Pete Rinaldi, um, Samuel Stokes, and Justin Hawkins walking like outside the venue, and I'm driving past. But but like I'll sort of sit sideways. I'm on the in the car, and I'm like, oh my god, it's Justin Hawkins. So I sort of slam the brakes on, chuck the car on this um, on the uh, pavement. Stick my head out the window, go, Justin, Justin, wait. So I sort of get out of the car, slam the door, <laughs> run over, Justin, Justin. And I'm going crazy. And this guy's looking at me like I'm fucking possessed at this point. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my God, I've just been to see you. And he's like, oh, that's so cool. Let's, let's, let's party. And I'm like, yeah. So I was like, can I take a photo? And he's like, yeah, it's fine. So I took a photo and I went, Right, I've got to go. Bye. He just got back in my car and drove off. And I'm oh, like, man. why yeah, did honestly. I just drive off? I didn't stand yeah. and talk to him. I just turned into a deranged lunatic for about 35 seconds. Probably um, like a minute and a half. Why do we do these is, stupid things? I don't I don't know. And do you know what? I, I've we and we're nowhere near we've nowhere near got people reacting to us like that, but we have what we are getting is people coming up to us and start crying um in some cases not all and uh, it makes me wait a second you I, said people I, cry yeah cr- they cry they is, it, is that because they've listened to your music no no i i that's no, I'm joking, the joke, I'm joking. I, that's joking. the joke I, no that's the joke i go to right to try and make them feel better like, oh my god we weren't that bad we weren't were that bad were we no, oh god no, you're is amazing it because i didn't play like, your favorite song we've never played that song live it's awful <laughs> I, I was like i'd give him a hug i was like you're all right and it's like yeah it's okay i said we're just like we're just three idiots from Birmingham and don't worry about it because I think with every, like I do this, I still do this. Luke spoke to Robert on the phone, right? And I'll tell the story about Luke, right? So Ollie and Susie got married and obviously Ollie invited us to the wedding. And Luke Luke hadn't met Planty at this crazy. stage. <laughs> yeah, it, it, oh, mate, it, it gets so much crazier. And Luke hadn't met Planty. And all the way in the car, Luke's like, do you reckon Planty will be there? I said, I think so, because they're in the same band, mate. Right, so it's going to happen. He goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, my God. I said, just be normal, right? Cause I told him what I did, and he goes, oh, I won't do that. I won't do that. So we get to the we get to the venue. Again, in between the vibes here now. Oh, mm. mate, uh, mate, honestly, mm, yeah. me, 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 me. We're, there. we're in the venue, and we go to the bar, and Bev Bevan is at the bar, and Jasper Carrot, because they're mates with them as well. So we're, we're already like, this makes no sense. And we speak to Ollie's <laughs> family and stuff like that, and we're literally by the door, and Luke's like, ah, oh, Planty's not here. And I said, yeah, he's not, but don't worry about it. And I swear to God, everything slowed down, and in walked Wanty, right? And he walked past us, he turned back, looked at Luke, winked at him, right? <laughs> and then and then carried on walking. And I just gave him a, you have no idea who I am. I gave him the head up, the, all right, mate, kind of thing. Right, plenty. <laughs> Luke, Luke didn't say anything. He's just frozen. And I was like, are you all right, mate? And he went, I am screaming in my head. <laughs> so Luke's like, oh, we're now best friends. We're now best friends. And Luke keeps making a joke to Ollie that does does Robert know that I'm his sitar player because Luke can play sitar. And uh, he's like, no, he doesn't. But Susie was on the phone to him once, Robert, and Luke was there. And Luke was like, <laughs> Luke was like, let me speak to him. And I don't know. He, Luke is just like that. When you meet him, he's just, you know, he's like the life and soul. And he just brings down barriers in people. So Susie passed the phone 
and uh, he went, hello, Mr. Plant. And he went, you can call me Mr. Wolf. And he went, hello, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> and it was like the <laughs> bizarrest conversation ever. But he's such a nice guy, Planty, that he just, he must get that everywhere. Just everywhere, right? He just get random people. But Ollie and Sue say he's, he's, and he is, I've met him and so is Luke. And he's the nicest guy. Sorry, I'm going to tell you another story where we where we messed up big time. Keep telling right? the stories; it's fine. Right, okay, this is this is George a good one. It's, re it's re related to us as well. So, this is how cool Robert Plant is, right? So, people have found out that obviously Ollie is Robert Plant's drummer because we we obviously talk about it and desperately hanging on to the coattails of it under <laughs> under Ollie's obstructions of. Don't worry about it. It's fine. No, so, listen. You've got. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to interrupt here. You could. You got to. You've got to play an association here. Oh, you know, yeah. I like, I mean, we've all got that. That, like, for example, the first day that's supposed to be Cory Taylor. Now, yeah. I actually prefer Stone Sour to Slipknot. Yeah. Now, people Agreed. say, how can you prefer Stone Sour to Slipknot? And I'm like, because I prefer hard rock to, to Slipknot's heavy metal. And I'm like, I yeah. love heavy metal, you know, freaking love Slipknot, but I yeah, prefer yeah. Stone Sour. So, you know, you've got to have that association of that. If I was actually, oh, I'm the guitarist in Stone Sour. Oh, are you in Slipknot as well? No, 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 I'm, I'm just Stone Sour. It's like, oh, but you know Corey Taylor? And it's like, yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah. You know it I mean? is, so he doesn't uh, uh, it know, is. man. Ollie Oli said it, Oli, and we, we asked Ollie beforehand, are we okay, like, when we when Ollie came back into the band and he's like, yeah, absolutely. He goes, as long as it's, you know, respectful and, and all that kind of stuff. Then yeah. yeah. No, so but this, I've told this on, I've told this on stage many a time and this is how cool Robert Plant is, right? This is how cool he is. So we put our gig listings out. Um, yes, this big was, gig list. That's what yeah. Well, this was like two, this probably about two years ago, a year and a half ago, we put like when we were doing that and um, there was gaps in there as well. And uh, we got, we got um there was a comment from someone saying is ollie jefferson playing on all these shows and naively this was our first experience of the press we said no ollie's not doing these shows you know because he's got other commitments and obviously saving grace is his is his first band and we need yeah. to be respectful of what they're doing right just again You'd very honest. honest yeah yeah very to it. the point so a magazine picked that up and uh it then went on to like Led Zeppelin news, which is and the Facebook pages and stuff like that, and they've got millions of followers saying, yeah. that, and they then read between the lines that Saving Grace were going to tour, um, and it hit the magazines and it kind of went a bit out there and it said that we'd confirmed it because we'd said these are the gaps. Are... Now they were pretty spot on the money because wow. it was. Yeah, they, they were, they've only put two and two together, really. Yeah, and they've kind of they've kind of got there, right? But we're then sitting there and so i phoned ollie and said ollie i think we've fucked up a bit here mate you know under no this is the post this is what we said this is how it's been transpired and this this magazine basically shared um the gaps of where our gig listing was and didn't share our gig list so i was like that's a bit off and um i said look i'm really sorry if we've caused you because they hadn't announced anything no. right as, as saving grace hadn't and i said if i've caused you any problem i'm so sorry and he was like don't worry about it I already had a text from Robert saying to tell you guys not to worry about it. Wow. Right. And I'm like, wow. And immediately I was like, I feel yeah, better. Because you don't want to upset you, anyone, do you? And you don't yeah, want to ruin I mean, it. I mean, you certainly don't want to upset Robert Plant. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing. I mean, like, forget that it, to, to be honest with you, I, th I just be, see, that is the art. Uh, that's the, the atypical one of those moments where I'd actually be a little bit like, yeah, I'd be sort of, I'd be a bit mortified that I'd done oh, that. Oh, we were. We you were know. mortified because we were like, oh, my God, we've oh. let like cat out of the bat. And not intentionally. We just, we were trying to say the right thing and not blur the lines for Ollie. No, you were just trying but to be they, honest. Yeah, but they took it. They took it and ran with yeah. it. But, yeah, he said, look, don't worry about it. Planty's already said, told us not to wear it. Because he gets it, right? But that's that was our naivety with, like, yeah. No, listen, Someone, like we've all done stupid things. And sometimes we've all been guilty of being a bit too honest at times. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. say, oh, I wish I'd not have done that. I wish I'd just lied. <laughs> or I wish I'd, I wish I'd bent the not replied, Maybe not, lied. To, yeah. not replied to the comment, you know, that was the yeah. thing. It's, um, but, 
But that's the kind of man he is, and that that band is. But do check them out, man. You'll you'll love them. They're, I'll, they're have, kind I'll of... have a little listen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so we come to uh, the most important part of Izzy Sample Got TV me. every okay. week, okay. and there is a new section that I have just thought of about twenty five minutes ago, and I'm going to see if this works. So, okay, mate. that's new. Right. So you're going to be the first guinea pig for this one. Okay, I'm so. In. But these are the uh, the fun question section, Neil. Right. I ask everyone a, a set of scripted questions, which I've written down, okay? And the first is my every week question that I ask every time. of If you were to have a portion of chips, with salt and vinegar on, maybe just salt, maybe nothing, would you have gravy or curry sauce? Uh, curry sauce every oh. single time. There's no right or wrong answer to that. It's if you say I won't do anything with it, and it's like, what? Well, no. Do you know what first came into my head? Cheese. So cheesy chips. Oh, wait a sec. My wife's a cheesy chips fan, but chips, cheese, and gravy. She's like, oh, ah, no, 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 no. I mean, you can't do chips, cheese, and curry sauce. It's curry sauce and chips. I agree. I think I think chips and gravy. Half rice, half chips, curry sauce. So half rice, half chips, curry sauce, or chips and gravy. Yeah. I'm really, so having that. It'll be tonight. really like thick as well and a bit gloopy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, so happy. Buddy's that. chipper. Yeah. No, I <laughs> love it. Ha! So the next question is sticky toffee pudding or apple crumble? Uh, sticky toffee pudding all day long. I hate okay. hot fruit. Hate hot fruit. Can't stand any crumble or That's any. Weird. Oh, oh, mate. I, I think I'm the only person on earth. No. That... Gaz didn't like hot fruit either. Oh, it cold mate, fruit? I, no, it's hot fruit. He said he didn't like hot fruit either. Oh, mate, there we go. We've, we've, uh, we've found our brotherhood. You found your brotherhood, <laughs> Dead Blonde Stars. Gaz doesn't like... That's crazy. Yeah, I you can't stand it. I promise you. Yeah, I can't stand it. Okay. Rhubarb crumb knocks me sick. Yeah. So, most likely to go missing after a gig. <laughs> Luke, with that shadow of a doubt. Right, where does he go? Where does he end up? He's actually done this, right? I've I've woken up in the mornings, uh, in the mornings, the morning after, morning. Morning. and uh, and just uh, got messages from people saying, "Where's Luke?" kind of thing. It, to be fair, he doesn't do it anymore because none of us drink anymore. Um, we we've ah. all quit drinking, and um, for that very reason, um, and because we're too busy. But yeah, yeah. he would. It just got. It, Luke is the life and soul of every party, as I said, and he's once when we we toured with the Belgian band. And I lost him after the gig. And I came out the back and there's just a group, a gang of Belgium lads around this one person. And someone's telling stories and they're all laughing. They're all joking. And I walk up and Luke's in the middle of them and he's just holding court. And they used to call him, I can't remember what it is in um, in Flemish, but they used to call him the palm tree because he just doesn't move on stage. He's like very like John Entwistle, just stands yeah. there playing. These lads. Is he, is he, or, or no, he's high. high. Yeah, he's high. Okay, he's okay. So, he's, so yeah. he's like, what's it? Uh, Comer, 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 Comerford out of um, yeah. Audio Slave fingers. Oh yeah, or, or he's right up. He's Ent Whistle. He's Ent Whistle reincarnated. Yeah, hundred yeah. yeah, percent. But these lads from Belgium met Luke kind of for the three days. All got palm tree tattoos on their legs because they loved him that much. That's the kind of guy he is. Wow. Honestly, maybe I'll get people that want to put Izzy Sumpit TV logo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, Free advertising, mate. Free advertising. Yeah, or their back, or maybe like like a tramp stamp type. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah imagine exactly. just my face with like the, the headstock showing that. Like, yeah, a QR headstock. code. Make sure there's a Q- QR code. QR code. Can... <laughs> Here's a link to my link tree. <laughs> you got it, mate. <laughs> I've got the advertising. That's Done. it. So, okay, and uh, so so he, he Luke's the most likely to go missing. Less likely 100%. now. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you could own any animal in the world, what would it be? Any animal? We've got quite a lot already. Any animal? Um, uh, and- I'd like I'd like a snake. I would oh, like. Oh yeah, a snake. but to be fair. Like a or you, or you thinking like a, I'm thinking something oh, like think exotic. Um, I tell you what, I'd love a cheetah because I'd love to see how fast it can run, <laughs> like in the car <laughs> and alongside it and stuff call like it, that. Call it Derek and say, yeah. "Come on, Derek, let's have a race." Let's go. Yeah, 
Uh, no, a cheetah. I'd say a cheetah because they fascinate me with like how they regulate their breathing and heart rates and stuff like that when they run. I love all. My wife would say a shark. She would dead. You need to get her actually. Mimi Detroit. You you love her. She she's a lot more punky and thingy with us and than us. So yeah, she'd say a shark. She's fascinated by Shark Week and all that stuff. So see, yeah. Gaz again last week said uh, said crocodile like a Nile crocodile. Basically, nah, man, they can. Yeah. They can shift. They can shift, man. Have you seen one of them at full pelt? They are dangerously fast. Same as hippos. They can run yeah, like man. 35 miles an hour. And I always yeah. share that funny, you know, that ever seen that meme where it's a hippo running and it's got the Pirates of the Caribbean music. And it's like that. And there's always like me running to the break room when someone says there's food at the office and you're like, din, 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 din. Oh, yeah. they're nasty little things as well. They're, they're hippos, quite violent. They're quite yeah, yeah. horrible chat and they've got big yeah. teeth and they you know, Big units, like yeah, yeah. you know. No, I'd so, say cheetah. Is cheetah a good answer? That's all right, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's a fine answer. It's a fine answer. That's a. Wow. Listen, I don't want anyone to say I'd rather own a cat. You can own a cat. I'm talking <laughs> illegitimate animals here. Animals that right. we are not allowed to own. You know. So okay. um, no, absolutely. Okay, so this is my magic eight. Ball. Oh, magic eight ball. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Uh, the story behind the Magic 8 Ball is about two weeks ago, I was sat there and I was choosing. <laughs> so, uh, should we interview Blue Nation? Well, no. this is it, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I was saying to, to, to the wife, what do we want for dinner? OK, and she was like, I don't know. And I'm like, we need a Magic 8 Ball for this scenario. Yeah, because she never knows what to eat when we order takeaway and I never know what to eat. Now, in the UAE, there's a load of options. You can literally get like a whole cow or, or uh, you could wow. pork's a bit of a struggle for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you can, so literally I want you to ask the eight ball a question of your okay. choice. And I, it could be anything. Okay. It could be about me. It could be about your band. It could be about anything. And we're going to see what the answer is. Okay, cool. I've got, I've got, called, it. I've got it. This is called let's ask the eight ball a question. All right. I've got it. And this is mega important to me. Okay. okay? So Not as ready? you answer it, I've got to shake it, remember? Because you've got to okay, ask the ready? question. No, no, you ask the question, then you shake it, don't you? I think that's yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, okay. okay. Will my Wi-Fi be turned on in my new house tomorrow? Excellent. Will his Wi-Fi be... Sorry, wait, sorry. Let me redo that. Will, will Neil's Wi-Fi be turned on in his house tomorrow? Oh, my God. I've never been so nervous. Better not tell you now. <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> to be honest. Magic Gable, he's oh. been ruthless. He's been ruthless. Oh. Okay, well, I'll let you know if that actually does. Yes, better not tell you that. He's, he's leaving you in, in uh, he's leaving you in like. Suspense. Uh, suspense. That, that's okay. a proper cliffhanger, isn't it? That is oh. amazing. That's the oh. first week of Ask the Magic 8 Ball. That's an amazing Mate, I like answer. That. I, like I like that. that. I like that too. I wasn't going to ask you about Blue Nation because I was too scared about the answer. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's good. A Wi-Fi question is, listen, mu um, Wi-Fi lives, musician lives matter when it comes to Wi-Fi. So, oh, tell me okay. About um, the final the final question before we wrap up, before we get to yeah. the, the end, is tell me a funny story from, from a gig because I always like the funny stories. Uh, some of the funny stories have, I've had to edit one out, which was too, too bad. And I had to go, right, you have to tell me another story. <laughs> okay. So this, this isn't, I've got, I've got one and it's yes. not, um, it's not from, it's not from one of our gigs. This is, and it, this involves Luke. Um, yeah, of course it does. Luke, Always yeah. in, uh, involves it, all, every story involves Luke. Luke uh, used to play in a Who tribute band many, many years ago. What and they were they called? Very, Substitute Who, which I think is a great name um, for the song Substitute. I, I'd got. have gone with the, the Who Are You's. Yeah, who are you? Yeah, yeah. No, exactly, yeah. And they're very, they were very, very good. Very, that very sounds good. good. Yeah, they were good. And um, they got invited to uh, the Royal Albert Hall to play the um, Teenage Cancer Trust because Roger Daltrey and the Who put that yes. on every year. I went to see that. And Muse played it as well. And the Future yeah, yeah. played it. Yeah. Yeah, Luke was Luke was probably there. Yeah. yeah so Luke, probably. Luke, was back, Luke was backstage and um, he was talking to 
Zach Starkey on drums for the Who and stuff, and he knows he knows some of the crew and stuff. So he's he's like he's like a mate, right? That one, I seen like I've met everyone. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, this so Luke's talking to this guy uh, who didn't didn't recognize and just having a good chat to him. And they they're speaking for about an hour, just about life, just about the Who, just as this, this guy, and just about how his you know cover band's going and what he does and how he plays and guitars and pickups and basses and just everything right everything everything known to music so luke's there and they're sharing a beer and luke's um luke turns to the guy and goes oh, oh so what sorry man what do you do and he goes oh man i'm in a band and luke was like oh no way that's great how's it all going <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah, it's going good, man. It's going good. He's like, oh, wicked. Um, what's your band called? And uh, this guy turns around and goes, uh, it's Pearl Jam. So Luke was <laughs> talking to Eddie Vedder for over an hour and didn't realize it was Eddie Vedder, to, which then Luke turns around. He goes, it's Pearl Jam. And Luke goes, oh, my God, you're Eddie Vedder? And he goes, yeah, man, I am. <laughs> Do you so, know what though, right? I, I've had well, this. I've had this. This like thing, right? Before that, actually, you know, you people look different in real life to they do on all these pictures. Okay. Now, if I reckon if Eddie Vedder was there and he had his maybe his hair up, yeah, you know, I don't Vedder, know. I don't. I think. And this just... is what I'm saying. That like, let's say for example, uh, let me think. Mick Thompson from Slipknot. He wears yeah. a mask. Now, Mick Todd's actually like sort of a Mexican-looking kind of guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we, and if you meet them and you're just in a pub or in a, a venue, you could be speaking to anyone. The, the problem is, the, the only problem with that is Eddie Vedder had just sang two songs with The Who. So Luke, <laughs> Luke should have known. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> oh, no, but, but the thing was with that, I said, what did he do? And, he, and Luke said, honestly... I think he was just really happy to having like a normal conversation with someone and not be having someone around him that was like, Oh my God, you're Eddie Vedder. Cause Luke was just being Luke. And, um, yeah, I've heard loads of stories about Eddie Vedder being just the nicest guy on earth as well with people. Um, and just being yeah, very this sweet is it. about it. Like, I think if you locked me in a room with like, see for me, number one, if you ever watch this, please Matt Bellamy, Please come on my channel. I've got, I love Matt story. I I've, love got great, I've got a great story about Matt Bellamy, if you want to hear it. Yes, I do. We've had the funny story sorry. about Eddie Vedder. Please tell me one about Matt Bellamy. But sorry, let me just have that for, hold you, it there. Can, Matt yeah. Bellamy, please come on my channel because I just... And you know, I don't even think... I think as I got older, I think I'd be quite calm around him because he's not a typical rock star he's a fucking rock star the guy's a yeah. maestro on piano the guy's oh. a maestro singer he's a maestro guitarist he's a maestro in everything he's just a legend and do you know what the irony of it all is he is jeans trainers and a t-shirt nine times like out of ten. Yeah. yeah it's me but not <laughs> and less talented and oh, man, they are I've, I've seen them live a good few times and they I've are seen, i've not missed the tour until oh. I missed uh, the last one, uh, Simulation Theory, and I am desperately trying to get to go and see them on the on the Will of the People because I freaking love Will of the People. That album is just insanely good. Yeah, so good new album. phenomenal band. All of all three of them. All, all three, three of them just and they're just great to watch. And I, I saw them twice at Wembley when we went. To, I saw them on the Saturday and the Sunday with My Chemical Romance supporting, who were very good as well. Shy Child, yeah. Biffy Clyro. It was just ah, oh, they're just such a. Is good that the one where they had the, the the trapeze artist and the big balls in the crowd? It was on the uh, super massive black hole that one. So I th no, I think I, that was. That I was, was at drones. that one. That was hey, drones. I was, I was at drones. I was at Wembley. Oh, I love drones. I went to see drones. I went to the uh, one of my friends out of my old band. Uh, went to um, he he got us, his friend, the drummer of his band, got tickets in like a seating box in like a, a executive box, and it was it was really good seats. And and I'm I'm not one to say seating at a gig is good, but I'm going to sit at Kiss this year. I won't be sitting there for long. And yeah, you know, I've got to see Robbie Williams, who for me is a figure rock star, man. Robbie is oh, Robbie insane. Great. Robbie's a legend, man. And it'll come at me, anyone that says you don't like Robbie Williams, he's a freaking genius. Another mm -hmm. one, an entertainer. But 
Honestly, I love Muse. Sorry, Matt Bellamy story. Tell me. Uh, I've got another Robbie Williams story, but we'll save that for another time. Yeah, so we'll Matt save Bellamy, that for another time. The Matt Bellamy story. So my brother-in-law works in like stage production and stuff right. like that. And uh, Muse were, uh, it was where I think they were spending about a million pound a show on the, on the, the whole yeah, show. They do put on a show. Yeah, they do. They do. And they're not that and expensive, then, the tickets. No, no. And yeah, there was loads of texts. Yeah, loads of texts, loads of people kind of standing around looking at um, looking at the stage and just making sure it's right, right, because they were doing pre-production. Yeah. And there was this guy in a hoodie there as well. And um, they were all looking at the stage and stuff and saying what well, had to be changed, like lighting rigs and stuff like that. And then they asked this guy and um, they said, what needs to be changed? And he went, there's a wire missing there. There's a You can see wires coming from down there. I don't like the way that that's um, there because that looks messy with the thing. And it was Matt Bellamy. And what Matt Bellamy was doing was removing like the mic cable and making sure that there was no actual visual representation of like the normal gig where you see like the mic leads running and stuff yeah. like that he was that acute with what it needed to look like on the stage that even the techs and even the professionals had missed it and he'd seen it go this 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 not being an artist he was being you know right yeah, this, is be this is the and the level of detail my brother-in-law said that he went into he just obsesses over perfection and and it was just like wow everyone was just blown away by him um because he was that on the money with it as well that and he's he's the guy on stage tech. doing the job right he's not the tech guy no he's not the tech guy yeah that's crazy i remember i went to see him at, uh at the manchester arena and i think it was on the it was on the uprising tour no yeah, yeah. it was one of the ones afterwards no it was the uh Panic Station, that that album, uh, yeah. the the second law, and he his guitar tap gave him his guitar, and it was out of tune, and he just went. Duh. I was like, no, and he just walked off, gave it what, just and he he sort of took it away, and gave him a new one, but he just looked at his guitar tech and just went. <laughs> it wasn't any real. It was it was a more of I'm not angry. I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> You've not. You've let yourself down. You've let yourself down. You let your mother down. down. <laughs> let fans down. You've let. You've let. You've let Chris down. You know, Chris is crying now. You know. Oh, I love it. Bassist. So, mate, it's been an absolute. It's been an oh, absolute pleasure. Man. This has been Thanks one of my favourite chats. I've loved oh, every amazing. second of it. It's. I think it's been about an hour and a half. You know, which oh, is mate. insane. Sorry. No, I'm never so apologise for that Can level just... of level of chat, man. Oh no! Can I just say yep. huge thanks to Dead Blonde Stars and and they are the nicest guys on earth as well. We met them at Wildfire Festival because obviously I think that's yes, kind of in Scotland. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So th thanks to them and they're, they're good boys, man, and they're a hell of a band. Hell of a band. Yeah, he's got so. a hell of a voice, hasn't he, Gary? Oh man, oh, it's yeah. insane. He sounds just like Chris Cornell. Yeah, but he's just they're all of them really good guys, and you you don't normally get that. Um, so it's yeah. The, if you don't, if you've never heard of them, you probably haven't listened to podcasts. But do check yeah. them out and do some yeah. music. Out Absolutely, no, they're very as good. well as ours. As well as ours. Yeah, exactly. This this episode, <laughs> this it's just been brilliant. It's been it's been fantastic. Oh, so thanks. before we go, um, could you just tell us any any plans for the rest of the year? Yeah, there's loads, mate. So it's, we're kind of right in the eye of the storm of festival season. So yeah. we're playing. We've got Jurassic Fields, we're playing Dush Plus Play, we're doing R and B festivals. We're going back to the Hundred Club in London. We played there oh, last that's year. That's amazing. That's such a great venue. Yeah, so that's in September the eighth. Yeah. Um then we're going on tour with Lawrence Jones in the Netherlands. So we're the first ever English band he's taking out on tour in the Netherlands with him. Oh wow, good and, luck. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, we are petrified because it's like O2 size venues no no you shouldn't be petrified do not be petrified for me oh, no it's more it's more the unknown because we've never we've played like one-off shows but doing doing that tour with him and he's he has helped us so much so You've much got nothing like, to fear your personality oh, we, we, will carry you the through. minute we step on stage we'll you know we'll be the idiots that we are you know and we'll, Luke we'll get, we'll be chatting fight. to everyone in the crowd exactly we'll, we'll be Dave Brawl and not remembering who he is I know that will that will blatantly happen going forward. But now we've we've got there's a low going on, loads of gigs. Um, we're then doing a UK tour with Lawrence, and there's talks yes, of a yes. coming out. 
as well. So I think we're playing uh, Milton Keynes, Sheffield, uh, Kendall. And like we're we're all around, but there's there's more stuff coming. We're going back into the studio to record four more tracks, and we're going to look at getting an album out next year and putting the EPs together. Yeah, and it's just gone mad, and we're so thankful that people are joining us on this journey, mate, and and digging what we're doing, and we just we love it. And Honestly, so just... I really wish you all the success, man. Because oh, thank you, man. It's it's a it's a competitive, but honestly, you guys, uh, you you're uh, honestly a top guy, uh, Neil. It's oh, been, thank been you. An man. absolute pleasure to have on. Um, you, it sounds like Luke and uh, Ollie are great guys as well. You've got you've oh, yeah. some, some yeah. amazing stories. We've actually not really talked a lot about Blue Nation, to be honest. We've it's that's been, fine. It's been that's it's, fine. It, you know, uh, it, it's been it's been a different chat, and I've I've really enjoyed it, and I'm hoping that more chats they are like this. Because they can find us. They can find us. They can find the bio on the website about how you started and all the little blurbs about nice people in NME that tell you all these things. But that if you time want to know jail, about... Yeah. That time we were all in jail together and we yeah. formed a band. It's a good exactly. story, but yeah, if, not for today. <laughs> if you want to know the time that uh, that Luke got winked at by uh, uh, Robert, Robert Plant, Plant and Neil given the, the I know you nod, then this is the place to come, yeah? Exactly. So, Neil, thanks for joining us. This has been Izzy Sam, you, Sam, Sam, uh, This has been Izzy Sampit TV on my podcast ch- chats with Izzy. Oh my god, I'm really screwing this ending up. Oh, this is really bad. <laughs> this is no, awful. No, I like it. Man. I, know, I like it. This is this is terrible. But thanks for joining me. This has been <laughs> Izzy Sampit TV chats with Izzy with Neil, the lead singer of Blue Nation. Thanks very much, my friend. I'll see you Thank soon. You, see you soon, buddy. Bye bye.